Welcome back to the deep dive. And uh, let's just dive right in, shall we? Today, we're tackling a topic that never gets old, the Roswell incident. It's one of those stories, isn't it? The kind that just sticks with you. And I know you listeners are familiar with the basics, so we're going deeper this time. We're talking firsthand accounts, official reports, those details that even make the skeptics wonder. It makes you question everything, you know, mm -hmm. what we think we know about, well, about everything, the universe, life beyond Earth, the whole shebang. Yeah. And we're going to unpack it all. Exactly. So let's go back to 1947, Roswell, New Mexico. We've got this rancher, William Mack Brizel. Now, I'm guessing finding metallic foil and rubber scattered across his land wasn't exactly a Tuesday for him. Not exactly your everyday occurrence. And that weird, tough paper he found. I mean, what was that all about? It's like the start of every good sci-fi movie, right? But here's where it gets really wild. Brazel reports the debris. Makes sense. You'd think it was odd, too, right? Reports it to the sheriff, who then contacts the Roswell Army Airfield. And just like that, things snowball. Suddenly, the military's involved, and this small-town incident becomes a global headline. Because, hold on to your hats, folks, the military actually announces they've recovered a flying disc. A flying disc? I can only imagine the uproar that caused. Oh, I bet. The but... newspapers must have gone crazy. I could just picture those headlines. Right. But then, get this, just a day later, they retract the whole thing. Just a weather balloon, they say. Yeah, that's the part that always makes me scratch my head. A weather balloon? Come on. That's what really fueled all those conspiracy theories. What were they trying to hide? Talk about a cover-up. And then we've got Jesse Marcel, an intelligence officer at the base. He claims he handled the Roswell debris personally, and he says it was like nothing he'd ever seen. Lightweight, yet super strong, covered in weird symbols. Didn't he also say it was impossible to cut or burn, like it would just spring back to its original shape? That's what got all those memory metal theories going? Exactly. And to make it even more intriguing, he claimed he saw alien bodies. Alien. Now, that sends chills down my spine. Me too. But wait, there's more. We've also got Glenn Dennis, a multician in Roswell. He starts getting these mysterious calls from the base. The calls about... Was it child-sized caskets? Yeah, child-sized caskets and embalming techniques. Who are they burying? What's going on? It just gets weirder and weirder. It's like something out of the X-Files. Yeah. Makes you wonder what they're not telling us. Right. So years later, 1994, the Air Force finally releases this big report trying to set the record straight. They say the debris was just part of a top secret project, Project Mogul, you know, those high altitude balloons they were using to spy on the Soviets. Trying to explain it all away, huh? That's what it sounds like. Oh, and those alleged alien bodies. Crash test dummies, they said. Crash test dummies. Okay, now that's just a little too convenient, even for me. Right. So basically, they tried to put the rumors to bed, but... But not everyone was buying it. There were just too many holes in the story. The timing, the eyewitness accounts, it just didn't add up. So what are we left with? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? What really happened at Roswell? It's like we're choosing between science fiction and a massive government conspiracy. Right. Was it a genuine close encounter? Did a spaceship really crash in the desert? Or did the government just decide, nope, the public can't handle this, time for a cover-up? You know, that idea, that fear of mass panic, hmm. it's a classic. And it makes you wonder, what would be so terrifying about discovering we're not alone? That's what gets me. Why all the secrecy? What's the big secret they're trying so hard to protect? Some say it was about advanced technology. Maybe they recovered something from that crash, something way ahead of anything we could imagine, and they didn't want the world to know. It's like something out of a movie. Or maybe, just maybe, it wasn't aliens at all. Maybe it was just a top secret project, something the military cooked up, and they used the whole UFO thing as a distraction. Oh, I like that. A good old-fashioned misdirection tactic. I mean, stranger things have happened. Right? right. And let's not forget, some people even think the whole thing was a hoax. A way to drum up tourism in Roswell, maybe? I've heard that theory. And hey, it worked, didn't it? Roswell's basically synonymous with UFOs now. True that. But whether you believe in aliens, government cover-ups, or elaborate hoaxes, there's one thing we can all agree on. The Roswell incident is a story that captures the imagination. Absolutely. And I think that's what makes it so enduring. It forces us to confront the unknown. It makes us think about the vastness of the universe and the possibility that we're not alone. It's humbling in a way. It reminds us that there's still so much we don't know. Exactly. And isn't that exciting? That sense of wonder, of mystery. It's what keeps us exploring, keeps us asking questions. It's what makes the Roswell incident more than just a story. It's a reminder that the truth, whatever it may be, is often stranger than fiction. 
And sometimes it's the mysteries we never solve that stay with us the longest. That's a great point. So for those listening who are ready to go down the rabbit hole, where should they start? What resources would you recommend? Give us your top picks for digging deeper into the Roswell incident. Okay, give us the inside scoop. Where do we even begin with all this? Well, I always tell people, start at the source. Go back to those firsthand accounts. Read what people like Jesse Marcel and Glenn Dennis had to say. Those who were there, who saw the debris, who experienced the weirdness firsthand. Yeah, their stories are pretty compelling. Even if you're skeptical, you can't deny the mystery there. Exactly. But don't stop there. Read the official reports, too. Yeah. The Air Force explanations, the counterarguments, all of it. Get the full picture, you know? So we're talking like a deep dive into all sides of this thing. Absolutely. See what makes sense to you, what raises more questions. Because at the end of the day, the Roswell incident isn't just about figuring out what happened on that one day in July 1947. It's bigger than that, isn't it? Way bigger. It's about how we approach the unknown, how we grapple with possibilities that challenge everything we think we know. The idea that we might not be alone in the universe. Exactly. And that's what makes it so fascinating, right? It's a mystery that keeps on giving. It really does. Well, I think we've given our listeners a lot to think about today. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us. The pleasure was all mine. Keep looking up. You never know what you might find. <laughs>